Good morning and praise the Lord to each and every one of you. It is a, a joy for me once again to be with you on Sunday Morning Reflections as we together engage in worship and fellowship that extends beyond the distance that, we, that may be between us. But we recognize always that God is a very present help in the time of our trouble. Join me with a word of prayer, will you? Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor your name and we thank you and we're grateful and we love you and we appreciate you for being so very good. We thank you, Lord God, that we are able to experience this wonderful and blessed Sunday morning and that we, your people, are able to come and engage in praise and worship and to hear your word. We thank you now, Lord, for all those that are watching and we pray for those, Lord God, that need an intervention in their lives. For whatever the needs might be, Lord, we know that you are able to supply all of our needs according to your riches in glory. And so we celebrate this Sunday morning and we give your name praise and we honor you for being a good God to us. We thank you now in Jesus name. Amen and amen. We're so very grateful always for the praise and worship ministry and we thank God for those who give of their time uh, to uh, lead us in worship on Sunday mornings and we're grateful. Amen for this week the uh, Bethel Bristol uh, praise and worship team. Uh, from this very church and we're very very grateful to them and for all of those that lead us in praise and worship each and every week on last week I began to talk about the church the challenge and the triumph and in this series of messages we want to be encouraged and let me say this as I begin you're in the right place that if you're part of the church and we invite those who are not yet saved hallelujah those who are not yet part of the body of Christ to come and to be part of what God is doing in this time you know there are many challenges that the church faces and there are those that will constantly highlight the challenges and the what they consider to be the problems that we experience in the church but remember always that the church has been built upon Jesus Christ and will never fail the church will never be brought down the challenge is that the church is made up of us people, men and women, and we're all different and we all have different experiences and we all come from different places and the church then creates a melting pot of experiences and cultures. But when we come into the church, the Bible tells us that we are one family, we are one people and that he is our God. And so that we must engage in the word of God 
and follow the tenets of the word of God and learn primarily to love God and to love each other. Amen. One of the greatest challenges that we will have in the church is the challenge of loving one another. The challenge of esteeming others more than we would ourselves. To put others before ourselves. To mind and ensure that others are blessed. And here it is in the word of the Lord that as we recognize the various uh, metaphors that the Bible speaks about the church. And I'll, uh, in terms of reminding us of where we were last week. Number one, the church is the body of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. The church is a family. And today we continue that the church is the temple of God and that we are temples of the Most High God. We are temples of the Holy Ghost. This is what Paul says uh, to the church at Corinth, that know we not that your bodies are the temple. So when we come together as people of God, we are coming together to form one temple. And that temple is a temple to give honor and praise unto Almighty God. Saints, we can make it. Saints, we will and shall overcome. Saints, we are more than conquerors. Saints, I don't care what is rising up against us. I don't care the challenges that we have to face. That we are the people of God. And in his word, he has made promises to us. Uh, there are over 30,000 promises that the Lord has made in scripture. And he is good to keep every one of those promises. And whatever your experience is today, whatever it is that you're dealing with today, and all of us are dealing with something or other at some time or other, I'm here to remind you to lift up your heads. I'm here to remind you to continue to give God praise even through your challenging experiences, even through the dark, dismal days of this pandemic. Continue to lift up your head and praise Almighty God because He is the God that will never leave us. He is the God that will never forsake us. He is the God that has promised that He will sustain us and He will supply us our every need every one of us come together and we bring something hallelujah if you consider a building that each of us are a part of that building each of us is a brick that builds up the building and my brothers and sisters no one of us in the church is better than anybody else i know sometimes we view people that have have offices and ministries and yes the bible says that we should give honor to whom honor is due but none of us no matter how high our rank in the church we're not better than anybody else we are called to be one people and we're called to love one another and we're called to restore one another and we're called to pray for one another and this is what the church causes us to do paul says it in ephesians 2 21 in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. And this is the focus of our messages over these next few weeks to establish that now that we are coming out of lockdown and, uh, and we're going back into the building, but never forget that we are going back with victory. We're going back in the fear of God. We're going back to celebrate God. We're, we're going back in our churches not to, amen, to get warmed up. We're going in hot. We're going in on fire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going in knowing that no matter what it is that we've experienced, that God has kept us through this time. As we recognize in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus makes this prophetic promise. He says, upon this rock I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. The plan of the enemy, he knows that he cannot destroy the church. But at times he will want to confuse the church. He will want to defeat the church. He will want the church to have, that, to have an in, infighting in the church. So he will do everything that he can do to sow seeds of discord among the brethren. And then many of us sometimes are not spiritual enough to know and to recognize that is the plan of the enemy. And we join in with the enemy's work. Yes, even in the church. 
because our maturity is not at a level to see to beyond amen who might be coming against us but to see the forces of the enemy that are trying always to defeat and destroy the people of God but we know hallelujah that love covers all we know that when we can pause and be patient with one another when we can speak peaceably to each other that that takes away it diffuses amen the the the, the, the bombs and the traps that the enemy would seek to use to destroy us amen in the house of god upon this rock i will build my church god is doing the building and he is building it upon himself he is the foundation and he is the way the truth and the life he is the sustainer of the church and i may as well go on and repeat myself and say to you brethren that is why whenever we come to church we must lift up a magnificent noise amen we must lift up a magnificent praise because he inhabits the praises of his people when we come together in the house of the lord we must concentrate on him we must forget about ourselves we must put our minds and our focus on god and that means we don't have to be in church long to experience the power of god we don't have to be in church long to experience miracles of god all we have got to do is to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise and we've got to know that the lord waits for us hallelujah he prepares the atmosphere he prepares everything that he we need in order for there to be deliverance in his house he prepares what we need for there to be miracles in his house he prepares everything that we need so that when we come we're able to cast our cares upon him that we're able to lift up our voices in prayer hallelujah and we're able to tell god all about our situations and when it seems that our hands are heavy and our feet feel amen like they don't want to stand but when we persevere when we press hallelujah glory to god when we push when we determine within ourselves that we are going to give god the praise and we're going to be like bartimaeus who when he heard that jesus was in the vicinity the bible said he lifted up his voice there's got to be a radical praise that comes out of our mouths there there's got to be a radical worship that the lord hears when his people come together there has got to be a magnanimous hallelujah uh, and, and mighty coming together so that one can chase a thousand but two can put ten thousand to flight so when i come i come not only to worship amen as a person but i come to be part of a worshiping community whereby iron sharpens iron and we are strengthened by those we come in contact with and together hallelujah when we join hands and hearts together we're able to be stronger than anything that comes against us amen right where you are i want you to lift up your voice hallelujah and say praise the lord it is important therefore that we as the church understand our power that we understand our purpose and that we understand the promises that god has made to us so the church is the body of christ the church is the bride of christ the church is the temple of god the church is also a flock we are a group of people when paul speaks to the ephesian elders in acts chapter 20 he tells us that our leaders of the church that we are to be on guard for ourselves and that we are to look after the flock hallelujah as a bishop amen in the lord's church my responsibility is not to look after myself it is not to put myself as a priority but my responsibility amen as the chief servant is to be servant of all and to ensure that those of us that desire to be great this is what jesus teaches us in john chapter 13 and we miss it oftentimes that those of us who want to be great 
hallelujah, must learn how to be servant of all. Our dear bishop would always tell us there are people who come into the church and are involved in ministry for what they can get out of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, there are those that are involved in ministry for what ministry can make them, for what ministry can, can put them in some type of position whereby they get accolades. But that ought not be our position. That not, ought to be our purpose. Our purpose must be, Lord, how can I contribute Hallelujah. To the building up of your body. What gifts have you given to us? What gifts have you given to the body corporately? And what gifts have you given to us individually? All of us will not have the same gifts. All of us will have different roles and functions. And in order for the church to impact the world in the way that it must, each of us must fulfill the roles and the responsibility. We must occupy the offices of that the Lord has given to us, that he has called us to, and we must perfect ourselves in what God has called us to do. So when God calls you into church, and calls you rather into service in the church, we must perfect the gift that God has given us. We must stir up the gift Hallelujah, we must not neglect the gift. And when I use the word perfect the gift, what I'm suggesting to us is that what God does is what he does, he exemplifies in Matthew 25. He gives us something and he tells us to work on it. Hallelujah, to expand it. Amen, to give it something, amen, so that when he comes, when he returns, that we're able to offer him something with profit, offer him something more than what he has given to us. And whatever it is that the Lord has given to us, we can only give it back to him because he has blessed us in a rich and mighty way. In 1 Peter 5 and chapter 2, uh, uh, 1 Peter 5 and verse 2 rather, Peter commends and commands the elders of the church that we are to give oversight. Hallelujah. We are to provide loving oversight to those who have been given to our care. And this is where the love of the saints come in. And this is where the patience of, for the saints come in. And this is where Jesus teaches us that we must do unto others. Hallelujah. As we would want them to do unto us. It's simple and yet complicated all at the same time. The Bible tells us not to look out for our own interest, but to look out for the interest of others. And my brothers and sisters, I speak prophetically to you this morning that we are coming into the greatest days, amen, of our church. We're, we're coming into a season when we will see the hand of God because when Zion travails, she will indeed bring forth. And we are experiencing growing pains and we're experiencing all of the challenges sometimes that we as people of God experience. But never forget that God has called you to be powerful and that when Zion travails, she will give birth. Some would look at the history of our church and they will talk about what has taken place in the past. And there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with casting our eye into our history. Amen. And to reminisce of the great days that we've had. And to reminisce of the ministries of our fathers and the ministries of our mothers. And how God used those ministries and, and used their ministries to shape us. And, and, and they admonished us and they corrected us. And we absolutely would not be where we are without the sacrifices and the prayers of those who have come before us. I am standing in a building, in a church that was built by men and women who gave their lives to the Lord. And we will look back even as I grew up in this very church and remember the great times of revival and the great times of miracles and healings and the times we would come back from retreat and we would fill this church with the praises of Almighty God. We have seen men and women delivered. We have seen demons 
cast out. We have seen the sick healed. And we have seen those that were bound set free. But remember that was yesterday. And we cannot continually live in our yesterday moments. Because yesterday as powerful as they were. Yesterday as great as they were. Yesterday is gone. And now our mothers and our fathers, some of them have gone on to glory, but Jesus Christ remains. And he remains the head of his church. And he remains the foundation upon which we build. And he remains the power of the church and, and so we can trust God um, that our past was great um, but we can trust God uh, that our future will be and can be greater uh, well Bishop how can our future be greater uh, because we will trust in the God of our fathers and we will trust in the God of our he's the same God um, yesterday today and forever and we will continue to rest upon every one of his promises so those that are called to lead in his church remember now and I'll repeat the people do not belong to us we are not owners of God's people we are not owners of, of the Lord's inheritance we are merely stewards uh, that God has called um, and set us over his work uh, and he tells us in Matthew chapter 16 uh, that he will not allow the gates of hell uh, we speak to every demon and every devil uh, that would seek to destroy uh, would seek to distract and would seek to defeat the blood of Jesus. We speak and commend the blood of Jesus right now that we are covered and when he sees the blood, he will pass over us. The church then is a group of people that have come together and those of us in leadership have been called to serve as shepherds and remember what Jesus talks about he says there are shepherds and there are shepherds and not every shepherd is a good shepherd not every shepherd will leave the 90 and 9 and go into the highways and the hedges not every shepherd will do that but Jesus said he is the good shepherd and we should use his ministry as the good shepherd as an example for those who would sometimes wonder sometimes there will be those sheep that go in the different direction and we through patience and love must attend to their healing and attend to their needs and so God expects each of us amen through love to be able to pass on that love to one another in first timothy chapter number three paul gives us yet another metaphor he says i write so that you will know how one ought to conduct himself in the household of god which is listen to what paul says is the ground and pillar of the truth he uses this now to ensure that we understand that there is but one church that when the Lord returns to this earth he is coming back for one bride and that there is one Lord there is one faith and there is one baptism and that those of us that come into the church must recognize that all truth emanates from his church and that if there is a place that you and I must hear the word of truth it is in the house of God now the truth that we hear sometimes will not always cause us to rejoice but truth is truth and truth comes to his church to correct and to commend it comes at times to chastise but the purpose of truth is that it might be a mirror to our souls that we can see through the word of God where we lack and where we are wanting and we can 
and do what is necessary to shore up those areas where we need to grow and to develop in. All of us in this walk will recognize that we are stronger in some areas than others. And we are to call upon the name of the Lord. And we are to rest upon him and he will bring it to pass. Do not worry about who's on the left, on the right to compare yourself with them. We must keep our eyes firmly focused upon the author and finisher of our faith. Paul says, if you want to hear truth, and truth must emanate in God's house. Truth must be preached in his church. The truth of God's word must be taught and it must be upheld. And we must never lower the truth to suit our own times or our own existence. We must always be challenged to live up to the word of God and never be tempted to lower God's word so that we can placate our own insufficiencies but ask God through his grace and through his mercy to bring us to a place amen where we will accept his word and we will ask God God help me to live the way you want me to live Lord help me to pray the way you want me to pray God help me to praise the way you want me to praise. Lord, help me to worship the way you want me to worship. Listen to what the psalmist David said. He says, teach me thy way, O Lord. And that teaching must begin in the house of God. And it must be upheld in the house of God. And it must be believed in the house of God. That So when God teaches us his way, we are then to live in the way that God teaches us through his word. And we will come and recognize that we can be strengthened. There are times, my brothers and sisters, when we grow weak, even in the church. There are times when we become frustrated, yes, even in the church. There are times when we would be tempted even to go back from where we have come from. But we are reminded in his word that anyone that puts their hand to the plow and looketh back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So I share with you today, hold on to God's unchanging hand, even as rough as it gets. Uh, it's not everybody that's looking forward to going back to the church. Um, I may as well teach you, not everybody is looking forward uh, because many have been hurt in the church and many, amen, have been turned around. Uh, but I'm here to tell you when your mind is fixed on God, uh, God will always bring people in uh, and to surround, to support and to pray with you so that you might be delivered and fulfilled. So don't worry, God has already fixed it. Don't worry, God has already taken care of it. Whatever your needs are, whatever, amen, the trepidation is, I'm here to announce to you that God has fixed it. God has taken care of every one of our needs. And so we can return to the church with joy in our soul. We can return to the church with worship in our hearts because we know that it's his church and he will rule and he will reign and we will acquiesce we will submit we will surrender to almighty God and leave God to deal with what he needs to deal with so as I close today I want you to fix your mind upon what Jesus said that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So what we talk today about the church, we talk also about the challenges but let's not forget the triumph. 
and the triumph is rooted in the fact that Jesus has given us the keys to the kingdom. Amen. And whatsoever we bind on earth, come on people of God, whatever we bind on earth, nothing happens in heaven until it first happens in the earth. Oh, heaven responds when we turn and we through prayer and thanksgiving make our request known unto God. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, it is important that you and I be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, knowing that victory shall be ours, that we will be triumphant, and that we will be overcomers, and we will never be defeated. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. The church of Jesus Christ is a city of refuge. It's a place where the saint can come and be fed. And it's a place where the sinner can come and be saved. It is a place where the, those that are broken can be healed. Where those that are living beneath their privilege can come and be taught the potential of their destiny. They can see in others how God can turn people's lives around. And we that are in the church, we become a testimony. We become an epistle that can be and must be read of all men. I triumph and I delight and I give God praise. I honor him today because there really is nobody like him. Nobody like the Lord. Nobody like the Lord. He is well able to keep that which we have committed unto him against that day. Hallelujah. Miracles. Hallelujah. Breakthroughs. Signs and wonders. We can expect them. We can anticipate them. And whenever you want to see a miracle, look in the mirror. If anybody ever doubts, that God is still a miracle work in God. Tell them to look at you. Ask them to listen to your testimony. I, I was thinking just a few days ago. And I was sharing it. Amen. With one of our ministers. When I think about things. My testimony is this. God has been good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We could go on and on and on and on and on, but it would come to the same conclusion. God. God. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. There are those of you that are not part of the church or there are those of you that were once part of the church and for what, listen, I know things can happen. You can become discouraged. You can become cast down in spirit. I know. And many of us have been there. But this is one thing I do know. God is able to strengthen. And God will send help. God will always surround you with people that will encourage you whether it's through a word whether it's through a testimony whether it's through the relationships that we have as brothers and sisters in the Lord God will always send someone to be a restorer God will always send someone to be an encourager hallelujah so be strong it's what Paul says to the Ephesians church be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Pray and speak to every pastor, every leader. Hallelujah. Every member of the body of Christ, God is with us. God has not forsaken us. Hallelujah. He is our shield and he is our buckler. And we can trust him 
to the very end. If you're not saved, hallelujah, you need to be saved. Hallelujah. 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 If you're not saved, you need to be saved. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The anointing is right where you are right now. The power of God is right where you are right now. Ministering to you. Minister, yes. Let those tears come to your eyes. Let, 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 let that humility come to your heart. God is at work in your life. Hallelujah. Every disappointment. Every sadness. Every pain. The trauma that have been inflicted on you God said I'm healing you I'm setting you free from your past and propelling you into a future where you can build your hope on things eternal so father in the name of Jesus I give your name glory and honor I praise you because there is none like you father take these words and Inject them into the hearts of someone that needs to hear them today. Someone, God, that is halting between two opinions. And now, Lord, you will use this message and you will use the encouragement of your word to nudge them into the kingdom so that they might come to know you. I pray for the saints of God everywhere, Lord God, as we are in this season. We thank you for strength. We thank you for strength. We thank you for strength, God. I speak strength in the name of Jesus. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for being that ever-present help in the time of trouble. We glorify you. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the challenge. And God, we praise you for the triumph. And we'll forever give your name the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Someone say amen. Will you clap your hands with me? Amen. Can you help me to celebrate the Lord where you are? Hallelujah. Thank him. Praise him. Glory to God. Give him the glory. He is healing you. He's bringing peace to your home. Hallelujah. Joy to your heart. And he's doing it because he loves you. Hallelujah. And he cares for you. In the name of the Lord. The Lord bless you today. Thank God for you. We appreciate you and we uh, continue to pray your strength in the name of the Lord. Be a blessing to your local church. Hallelujah. Give your tithes and your offering. Be a blessing to somebody. Amen. Maybe the Lord will lay someone on your heart for you to be a blessing to them. And whenever God instructs us to sow, we know that we will reap. And we always reap more than what we sow. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank God for you. Look forward to seeing you again as we continue to celebrate the church. Thank him for the challenge and praise him for the triumph in Jesus' name.